If there is a message for us today, I believe it is to learn to live from our heart in love. These short lessons, hopefully, will help to inspire you to live with purpose, love passionately, and inspire others. We are the change agent our world needs. I'm Helen Taves. Step into the river today with me to explore the mysteries of God. They are not hidden from us, but for us to discover. All right, what fun. <clears throat> yeah, and I do want to say welcome. Uh, welcome to everybody. And uh, everybody has absolutely frozen on my screen. Can you wave, wave to me just so that I know that there's life out there? Thank you. Thank you. Because it actually just went totally still. <laughs> Thanks, Todd and Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> last week, I'm going to start with, um, I know that that we're so blessed that Margie's on, on tonight with us. Uh, <clears throat> but I just want to sort of segue into tonight after last week and maybe do a little, little house, um, just you know, housekeeping stuff here. We have, um, we had a, I thought an amazing time last, last week in our Ascension time. It, and it seemed to spill over to the week. It, it, I've had people share from, from that time and, uh, and what a blessing, like what a, a super blessing that that is. Uh, I, 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 Karen triggers a, something in me today because she said, I, I'm telling your testimony, Karen, but you, you can share it that since, go ahead. Why don't you share your dream? Well, since our Ascension time last week, and Helen said that we would be having dreams and I normally don't remember my dreams. But I've remember I've had dreams every night this week, vivid dreams. Um, so I'm just unpacking what in the world is um, about these dreams. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Right. Fun. And and you have family getting together. There's some exciting things happening. So uh, yeah, awesome. Um, we're packing up today. Head back to Kansas City area. And we'll be house sitting for five weeks. And oh my goodness, I am so blessed. Um, all the one of my children will be coming to stay, um, and all of our grandchildren will be coming. And one of those grandkids I haven't seen for three years. And so, yeah, it's just big okay. that we have family coming together. And that was a part of my mind movie was family unity. Yeah. And all this has kind of come together this last week. And um, yeah, I'm just really grateful and looking forward to it. Just the joy of my heart. That's so great. That's so great. I it, It's a joy too. It's just, I just love it when it's just like Todd's uh, testimony tonight about how blessings are expanding, like exponentially expanding in their lives. Uh, and 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 Karen, like from from the mind movie, setting your heart to seeing the results. It, there is not too much a time from amen to there it is. Like it just wow. it just seems to be happening. And uh, I woke up that night after we after that time in in Ascension. We really haven't done it enough together. And uh, we had ended in that everybody was in a stateroom. And I, I went into a dream where I was in, in this stateroom and I saw a staircase, I had my own private staircase that went into the observation uh, deck of the train that we're all on. And as I, I went up the stairs and got into that place. You were all there ahead of me and you were all laughing at me and you saying, well, what took you so long? <laughs> and, and it started to, to, to um, just trigger some things for me and actually set some things in, in place for the, the next few months. And I was going to, just take 
take the next couple of months off. It's a very, very busy season, but I don't want to, I have, I have to take some of the time off, but what I want to do is to uh, say to everyone, let's meet whoever can every second week and we'll share our testimonies let's keep it you know keep the rhythm going if you can i know you'll be on holidays and those of you and you know down under you're in your winter mode i don't know what you do during that season but it it certainly changes here in north america and, and uh but i i thought i'm going to send out an invite every second week and and let's just spend some time just staying connected and and ascending together let's take that that time and just see what it is on that observation deck that he wants to show us so if you'd like to do that for the next couple of months rather than than just take summer off i would um, i would love to do it and whether there's two of us or 25 of us doesn't matter we're you know the opportunity will be there and whoever can come so uh, I will I will I will send out a schedule of of um, uh, you know after this meeting, and uh, so you can mark your calendars. And I'll do the same thing. I'll just send out the Zoom on the. It'll be a Wednesday on the same uh, in the same format. <clears throat> you know, a couple of hours before our meeting. So that anyway, just thought that's what we do. <clears throat> Anybody? Everyone okay with that? Okay. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. Tonight, I'm actually really, really excited um, that Margie has has uh, is willing. I'm going to put. I'm going to pin me because we're going to we're going to um, record this, Margie, as you know. And uh, I don't want to be on screen with you because it's not going to be an interview as such. So Kathy, if I if I just put it on speaker view, that will work. Yeah, yeah. As long as uh, no one else unmutes and you don't if you don't pin yourself, because then you'll just stay on there. Okay, because you can on. actually pin. I think you can pin Margie too. I will pin Margie. Okay. All right. So that's. I just I just want to be better at this. And I'll just go off the gallery and I'll pin Margie. Okay, Margie. Uh, I don't think Margie takes any any uh, introduction other than the fact that she's in the dark. <laughs> so here here's Margie in the dark. Yeah, he just died on the flashlight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to change it because he get my my husband my great husband gave me a second one, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is very funny to me. <laughs> well, you have to hold things lightly. I'm going to change it. I so this, <laughs> this whole region is out. Yeah. Yeah. My whole, the whole area. We've been hit. It really was like a typhoon. And we don't have typhoons. No, <laughs> no. And you're east of us, so you're you're in Eastern time. Yep, we had a hurt. We had an earthquake here recently too, and we never have earthquakes either. Well, it's the oneness. It's the I amness. All right, I'm gonna you you talk. I'm gonna ask my husband to un unhook the last battery so I can put <laughs> this one on. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> Bobby will fix all that that stuff here isn't this fun it's a whole <clears throat> everybody's lights are on i don't know what the problem is oh iphone number nine is there a person behind there <laughs> i'm back I was just asking iPhone number nine that's on our, our in our meeting here uh, if you would say something. Introduce yourself. Say hello. <laughs> Maybe. Is, is somebody on a video and iPhone? Sometimes that happens. 
No. Can I add to this? I think it's so important. I I married a fellow who had a wayward eye. And so eye contact to me is so huge. Uh, when we went to the Cedar Creek, I ran into somebody. Um, actually, there were two people that said they really appreciated what I shared. But it was kind of unnerving because I didn't recognize them because they had always been behind the little box. So oh. I'm just, for me personally, it's crazy important for eye contact. Anyways, I love you all. And we all have our reasons. I duck behind my little box sometimes too. Anyways. Okay. Th thanks, Lana. That's really sweet. <laughs> There's Susan. <laughs> Everyone's unducking. <laughs> oh all right thank you all right margie look at you let there be light <laughs> <laughs> and there's light I so now you. now i'm pinning you again here um <clears throat> yeah i just want to want to say margie how grateful i am uh margie ha has been part of the river as you as many of you know for for a long time now but is because of her um a commitments to her counseling business. I don't know what you call it a business, but it's her ministry um, that uh, she's not able to be on every, every Wednesday. So when she is, I'm absolutely delighted because you bring a, a beautiful level of, of energy and wisdom, Margie. Uh, I love that we get to talk in between, in between seeing you. Uh, and I know that, uh, uh, you'll I mean, Margie will often write and say, I just watched last weekend, da, 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 da. So we have conversations and I enjoy those very much. Um, I, I appreciate those, those moments and that contact because we so often feel like we're, we're in this um, void in, you know, the zoom is really great. Love it. However, it's really, um, it, nothing beats being in person, right? Nothing nothing is is the same but i do appreciate and to all of you i appreciate your phone calls i appreciate emails and being able to, able to connect i try and answer uh as quickly as as possible sometimes i'm better at it than others but i do want to say i appreciate that as well and margie your wisdom i i love how our conversations have have been and and i'm so grateful for you to, to bring uh, your supply and in particular this message tonight. And uh, I'm just gonna just turn it over to you and say, thank you. Okay, and um, before I even begin, I just wanna say that I know that my journey isn't that different from everybody that's on here. Like everybody's on a journey and I'm just getting an opportunity to even just clarify what I've been going through. I, I had told, um, Helen, I was going to write a book and I won't tell you the title because I don't have it completed yet, but you'll figure it out from my, but we're calling this my journey to freedom. So, um, so I'll, I'll just start. It's like, this is the story of my journey through the depths of what I thought I knew about God and how my relationship with Jesus stayed intact through the unraveling. So some of it, I will be like, just looking at my paper, but um, I had it all set up in my office. It was looking good. And I had my computer. And then once that went away, it's like now I'm a little frazzled, but we'll get through this. All right. So I grew up in an Irish Catholic dysfunctional family. And I never met Jesus in all my years of Catholic grammar school as he was clouded out by what was going on at home. Um, early on, I walked away from all belief in God. You know, a lot, a lot happened and um, the church kind of ostracized my mother when she finally um, separated. I don't think she even ever got divorced. But my dad was an alcoholic and it was just bad. So um, it's kind of like God, God took the brunt of that, right? So in college, I had an experience with some friends where I encountered God and a sense of love that I had never felt before but no one could answer all my many questions. As if you know me, that's my, 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 what is it claim to fame is that I ask tons of questions. So I gave up on it all, right? What I realize now is Jesus was always there for me, even after that, but I wafted in and out of the relationship with him. 
And it wasn't until I was 26 years old and I had returned from teaching English in Taiwan. My mother was like, could you get any further away from me? <laughs> but I was, I was there for many months. I was there for like seven or eight months. And I realized that I was still me and I had no direction or purpose for my life. So I was pretty desperate when I got back. I really thought that just going so far away would change my circumstances, but it just didn't. So out of desperation, I went to church with a friend that had in college also had an experience with Jesus and she she kind of stayed in the in the faith. There I was overwhelmed with the powerful love that I had never encountered to that degree before in my entire life. It immediately healed something within me that had been longing to belong. So the next 30 plus years were spent turning that love and acceptance into rules, regulations, and separation. Most of the learning was in evangelical charismatic churches. So the purpose of all my learning was to teach others about Jesus so that they didn't go to hell. And I'm sure most of you can you know, understand that. These are some of the things that I learned from fundamental charismatic religious practices. Now, I just wanna say also, you guys are powerful people. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to, this is my journey, right? I'm speaking this from Margie's experience. So there's like 20 of them that I learned. God is separate from me. God judges me and he finds me filthy. Outside of Jesus's love, I am unworthy. I must work very hard to please him. The devil is more powerful than me. Behavior matters more than love. God is judgmental and therefore I should be. God created hell for his own children and it is eternal. God says, love your enemies, but kills his. We cannot see God face to face. His love is conditional, yet God is love. I am nothing and can do nothing without him. My own heart is deceitful above all things, and I can't trust it. The realms of heaven and God's kingdom are only accessible after death. My goal in life is to die to myself and all that I desire. Living an abundant life is sinful. Life is a struggle and something we endure until we finally get taken out of here. <clears throat> the world will be destroyed. All the people that don't accept Jesus will go to hell and burn and suffer forever. But we're supposed to enjoy ourselves in heaven. My life is in the hands of a loving, yet often angry dictator. So that's just 20 of the things that I learned, right? So all of these so-called truths had created a cognitive dissonance within me as my intimacy and experience with God grew. Now, the theory of cognitive dissonance is it proposes that people are averse to inconsistencies within their own minds. So cognitive dissonance is a psychological phenomena that occurs when a person holds two contradictory beliefs at the same time. It offers one explanation for why people sometimes make an effort to adjust their thinking when their own thoughts, words, or behaviors seem to clash with each other. I was constantly up against this in my life. I lived in that place a lot. As I grew in my spiritual experience and intimacy with God, and as the heavenly realms opened up to me in greater and greater degree, I started to question some of the things I had been taught. Now, if you, if anybody wants to interrupt, is that okay? Or then I'll be unpinned or whatever. Is that a problem? Uh, <clears throat> it's not a problem for me. If you want to take questions throughout. Well, but and we can take questions at the end, but if someone has anything that they want to add, like, feel free, I won't be offended. Okay. All right. All right. You have anything to add, Helen? <laughs> we could I'm, going to, I'm going to ask that they're, they put their hand up. I put the screen back up uh, so I can see it. And uh, then I'll let you know if someone has a question. Is that okay, okay. everybody? Okay. okay. So right. at this point in my journey, I'd spent years and years filling my heart with biblical narrative. I had become a Christian counselor, a deliverance minister, and speaker about all things Bible and God. 
My main focus had always been our identity in Christ, but I had come up against some resistance to what I saw and what others would accept. My foundation started to unravel as I joined an Ascension group. And I believe Donna's here tonight. I can't see her at the moment, but <laughs> she's my leader, my fearless leader. Um, we've been together for many years. And in that group, I allowed myself to explore the outer boundaries of what had been acceptable in the current churches and communities that I was a part of. At this point, God started challenging me with conversations that were very different than what I had been used to. One day he said to me, don't think you know. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought the whole point was to know. And he said, you may be wrong about some things. I was like, okay, great. Do you know what I do for a living? So I was real, that was like the beginning of an unraveling, right? So what I learned was that a lot of what I believed had been taught to me from other people not through my conversations with God. Mm -hmm. Now I know that therein lied my biggest hindrances to becoming all I was created to be. Ascension practice, which now I've been doing for around six years, opened me up to the possibilities that were not available in the realms of the church. I was still involved in church for many reasons that I'm sure you all have your own story about, but it was starting to cause many problems for me spiritually and emotionally. So I continued to pursue the more. As my mind expanded and was open to more and more opportunities outside the church, I had another interesting conversation with God. He said, now this is just another one of those things that you can, you can yell at me later, okay? <laughs> he said, why don't you look up the word inerrant and see where it started in the church and when? So of course I did. What I found shook me to the core. I realized that for most of my adult Christian life, I had been taught and stood proudly myself on what I thought was absolute truth, that the word of God was inerrant. And what I learned was that the doctrine of inerrancy took shape during the 19th and 20th centuries in the United States. A statement crafted in 1978 by hundreds of evangelical leaders remains the fullest articulation. According to the statement, the Bible speaks with infallible divine authority in all matters upon which it touches. The Bible itself does not claim to be an errant. The closest it comes to claiming anything like that is in 2 Timothy 3.16, where Paul states that all scripture is inspired and useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. In other words, the Bible is God's authoritative instruction for the church, but it's not necessarily without any errors. What God showed me in this rabbit trail of discovery, discovery was that I had believed something with my entire being and taught it to others without getting that instruction directly from my God. And that really was a sad thing. Like it, it angered me and it, it embarrassed me that I could be so gullible. I truly believe today that God's word is sacred and of major importance. But if I take my relationship with him out of it, then it's useless to me. Because I really believe now that that is really what it was intended to be. We were supposed to read it and, and go to him and talk to him about it. We were supposed to talk about what we were finding in there and get his take on it. Paul didn't have a, a Bible. He was writing letters to people, right? And they were supposed to go to God. The next thing that God and I did together was learn from great teachers and who thought also outside the box. People like Nancy Cohen, Justin Paul Abraham, Ian Clayton, Mike Popovich, Mike Parsons, and the list goes on and on. Donna and I would have great conversations about all of this. <laughs> I became an information junkie and listen to hours and hours of what I now call next age thinkers. My mind was growing and expanding, and so were my questions and the freedom to ask them with God. Then I came across websites like The River 474, which filled me with challenging videos and like-minded people. I thank God for COVID and the Zoom rooms that had not been available in the time before. I started to thank God for obstacles, recognizing that they were becoming opportunities 
and stopped being brick walls for me and just put and and they used to just put the brakes on but it was at this time especially after meeting Helen and all of you beautiful people that I felt God encouraging me to explore things in the past that would have been completely out of my wheelhouse and frankly demonic people like Wayne Dyer Joe Dispenza Abraham Hicks Next Level Soul Suzanne Geisman and many, many more. God showed me that people outside of the church were walking on water and transcending time, which I always said I would do, but why wasn't I? It was challenging me to go where I, before I wouldn't even allow myself to go. So my friend Samantha, who some of you might know too, helped me to see that God was really showing me that he trusted me by encouraging me to, to explore outside of the tradition that I was deeply ingrained and trained in. A trust I was not so sure I deserved because I was terrified. <laughs> Initially, I was very afraid. I was like, and I was afraid of losing what, what I had. I was afraid to lose the foundation that my life and my business or my practice was built on. Next came the What If Chronicles with he Helen and Kim. I don't need to list here all that we learned because you all partook of the glory of those classes, but let's recap a few of the things. So this is just from what if one. What if all creation was waiting for you to see it? Sometimes we need to go back and reread this stuff. <laughs> what, if un under what if we understand the difference between ego and spirit? I think we've learned a lot of this. What if you are source and resource? That one changed my life. It really did. I don't, I don't think of things the same. What if you lived your life from your sacred self? What if you lived from the now of Father's heart? What if it is our responsibility to bring the world into peace? And I truly believe with everything in me that it is now. What if you are not of Adam? What if we are living in the age of Aquarius? What if all things are determined by you? What if we learn to do only what we see our Father do? And what if your body is the key? So here's when my world started to explode and deep subconscious truths were being tested. Things I believed in the very core of my being were now being tested. God was like, why do you believe that? And what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I questioned everything and had my share of dark nights of the soul. I have to admit, it felt like my house was crumbling and I had no foundation. All was dust. Through this process, I sometimes even thought there was no point in believing in God, as it may just be a construct of man. And probably you guys have been down that journey, but it's scary. <laughs> I'm on the other side now, but those were difficult times for me, as Jesus had been my rock and my reason for living. And he is, and he always will be. At times, I actually thought, what's the point? And in my whole life, ever since I started sozoing and learning that you can see in the spirit and stuff like that, I had struggled with depression most of my life. But once I started ascending and, and actually talking to beings and seeing God from this whole other place, I never really struggled the same way that I had in the past. And through this process, I kind of was teetering on the edge a couple of times, <laughs> but I'm persistent and I rarely give up. Thank God. So during the same time, I came across a woman talking about the bride of Christ and awakening her. I always would say that God's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. That was one of my quotes. It's from the Bible. And Catherine Wang in her book called Living Loved and through her website called Age to Come University, we, she was talking about us as the bride. As I do when I find someone that speaks my language, I found her and I joined her group. I tend to like to know the people I'm following. <laughs> so I go after them, right, Helen? <laughs> so in, in one camp, we're becoming I am. And in the other, I started learning how to be God's wife and all that that entails. Ultimately, God was challenging me to imagine believing in a true oneness with him. At one point, he even asked me to stop calling him father. And I that was a painful time, too, because I 
finally had one. <laughs> and I remember times when he would let me dance with him and I would like be on his feet. It would be like Beauty and the Beast in the dance room and I'd have my yellow dress and it was just awesome. So we did a lot of healing work as my dad, but now he was asking me because he said he can't marry his daughter. So he was asking me to mature into the position of wife. I was like, wow, I didn't think I was ready, but I'm, I'm still working on it. So my intimacy with God was developing very differently than anything I had experienced before. And it was at this time that I realized that in order for any of this to actually manifest in my life, I would have to get serious and get down to business. I knew that the body is the servant to the mind and that unless I made some serious changes, then all that I was learning would only be theory. I heard Joe Dispenza say, and this really struck me, when a person makes a decision to change with such firm intention to make that change, the amplitude of that choice carries a level of energy that causes their body to respond to their mind, that the choice that they make in that moment becomes an experience they will never forget. And I remembered when I experienced Jesus at 26 and the love he was showing me, I made a decision to follow him for the rest of my life. And I will never forget that day or that decision. So that was an example to me that that is absolutely true. That experience proved to me that the power of a decision, not once did I go back on that for, for more than a few terrifying days. When I work with clients, I always say that if you are only ever going to try, it will never change. You have to first make a firm decision and the change will follow. Practice is different than trying. Trying is, it's kind of like saying, maybe you're gonna forgive, <laughs> you know? Choosing to forgive is a whole nother ball game, but practicing is different than trying. So what I started with is helping people to practice making a decision, because remember, even when we tried to overcome a sin in our old life, you had to decide ahead of time. Like I, I grew up a liar. I just was. I grew up in an alcoholic home and you lied when it was just as easy to tell the truth. You just did because life was better when you lied. So when I became a Christian, I didn't want to be a liar, but I had to decide ahead of time because an opportunity was coming to lie. So I practiced by being and telling myself I'm not a liar. And that's how I overcame it. I, came, I overcame it with the decision. So these are some of the things I did to be able to come through my fear and step up into my I amness. And I'm, I'm, I really hope these challenge you. I ask God to continually open up realms for me in the spirit and help me to engage with spiritual beings. I met with justice that judges whether things in my life are the best or they're just good. I asked him to go back over every year of my life with me and examine them. It was a lengthy process, but I felt like we wrote, we re rewrote my history in the process and opened portals of blessings in every year of my life. I will believe, I believe I will have an, that, will, that this will have an impact on all my generations to follow because I went back over my years and I made sure that I took the good stuff and left the bad and I opened a portal of blessing for good things to continue to flow through from wherever to wherever. I did a class on working with angels. And although I still don't see them in the way that I'd like to, I'm more of a knower than a seer, but I'm gonna start saying I'm a seer because that's what's gonna change it. I'm practicing walking with them and inviting them into every aspect of my life. I'm practicing talking to creation. Recently, my husband and I went on vacation and we went to Cape Cod and um, well, we went actually to New England. It was a road trip, but we spent some time in Cape Cod because it was just really beautiful. And we just went back Cape Cod, Massachusetts in the United States, in case you're not all from here. Um, and we went on a whale watch. And before we left the, the shore, I, I sat there and I said, whales were coming. And we really would like to see a show today. <laughs> so I sat in my queendom on the ship 
and I orchestrated that the, the whales would understand. I wah, 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 started talking to them in whale, but <laughs> they heard me and um, it was unbelievable. It was, I've never seen anything like it. Maybe some of you have, but I have never seen anything like it. First, we saw these two thin whales hanging out together, which they don't do. They weren't mom and um, baby. It was, they were feeding or something. And then this humpback whale, he did a dance. He did a show for us. I guess uh, there's like seven things that they do. Like they flap their big thing and their fins and they did this thing with their tail and he kept doing that. We actually saw the bottom of his tail, which normally they could identify who he was, but he was, and he was new to the area or a she. And literally the, the naturalist is what they're called on these boats. And she said, she said to everybody when, when we were leaving, she's like, in case you ever think about going on a whale watch again, don't. <laughs> she was like, you will never, ever experience anything like this again. So, you know, so I knew they had come. They had answered, creation had answered me. And it was just amazing. So much so that when my husband and I look at this vacation we took, we, I, we just realized this the other day, like my car broke down. I had to get brakes and it was screaming. Like it was just this whole thing that God just orchestrated the fixing of and everything else. But that never, ever enters my mind about this vacation. Like I went, well, I saw whales like that. They were dancing. Like I, ne I don't remember that my car broke down. It's like normal in, in the past years ago, it would have been the highlight of the, 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 the vacation. My car broke down, right? But I am so far beyond that, that that's just not what I remember. Okay, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, the next thing I did is I pressed through the terrifying reality of what all of these alterations to my faith would mean to my friendships, my family, and my business. I mm -hmm. thought I couldn't continue to call myself a Christian counselor, but that's false. I am a Christian through and through. And I'm just no longer religious. And I don't care what others think of me. I care what my husband God thinks. But I realized that the key here is being able to walk through the most terrifying fear that rises up inside of you. We're never going to be in our I am-ness without pushing through the fear. We're just not. It's the thing. Moses had to put the staff in the water, right? Like you have to press on. So I'm just encouraging you. I practice eating from the tree of life and not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I learned this from my friends at Age to Come University, Catherine Eibel and Margaret Beam. And I have a copy of um, the tree of life. Are we still good with time? Yes. All right. I'm going to read some of these to you. So the tree of the knowledge of good and evil versus the tree of life. So good and evil, separation. Tree of life, oneness and union. Tree of uh, good and evil, fear versus love. Death, aging, disease versus life, health, and ever-increasing glory. Striving to survive, fight and flight versus resting to thrive. Guilt, imperfection, condemnation, shame, and blame versus innocence, perfection, acceptance. Hierarchies versus equality. Inherent depravity versus inherent goodness. Acceptance or rejection based on behavior. Acceptance based on identity. Belief in lack resulting in external sourcing, living from the outside in. Belief in abundance and sufficiency resulting in internal sourcing, living from the inside out. Infant child level maturity versus adult parent elder level maturity. And I would add even wife. <laughs> taught external by instructor or tutor and taught internally by God and the Holy Spirit. So I just think that's amazing. And I'm really practicing living from that tree like when that judgment starts to come up in me like it brings me back to the whole pono wono hope i said that right i always say it wrong um i really try to not that's not my job that's not my job and i have to fight for that because it, it's also a subconscious construct that i no longer want and then i did and i'm doing many other things that challenge me to walk in my royalty to walk with my creator and co-create with him. 
He has elevated me to his wife and I'm learning how to rule in that royal position so that I manifest the aspects of God that only I carry. I believe that this is all part of the increase of his government and peace having no end. We are called to legislate from our thrones. Recently, I learned that I will never master anything, but especially where I'm in a class with mastering time, as long as I've not created a throne in my heart for time to reign from. I'm working on creating thrones for all the things I want to master. Supernatural transportation, cardiognosis, wealth. I'm going to create thrones for every one of these things so that I can walk in my royalty. I realize that no other human has the answer. That was a tough one. I really wanted someone else to have the answer. <laughs> it is all within me and in my intimacy with Trinity. So I can learn from others, but they have their portion, their portion of God's truth that they offer to the world. And I have mine and it is good. God said all he created was good. So I want to challenge you all to consider what steps are you taking to actually walk in all your royalty and your God likeness. Here are some steps that could be valuable to consider for yourself. Meditation, meditation, meditation. <laughs> Make a commitment to yourself to meditate daily. If you've never done that consistently before, now is the time. You're missing out. I promise you that if you even just do three minutes every day with a timer, it will change your life. You can sit in the breath for the first two minutes. And in the last minute, just ask God what he wants to say to you today. Or you could breathe your I am statements, as Helen is so apt to remind us, and just sit in them. You could also see every one of the fruits of the spirit as a being or the seven spirits before the throne and engage with them. Wisdom and I have a room that we meet in to discuss important things. And one of my ascensions... Donna's group, um, we actually created this little glass room. We, we had technology to turn sand into glass. It was just amazing. So I go there and I sit with wisdom. Don't turn your phone on or any device for at least a half hour when you awake in the morning. Center yourself in gratitude and your God before you open yourself up to the busyness of your life. Put next to your bed some declarations about the life you want as if it is today. Things like, I am in my perfect place, enjoying my perfect life, and living my life to the fullest. And here's an exercise that you can do. Um, I, I saw this online. It was on a TikTok or something. And it was a two-cup manifestation technique. And I have one cup, but I, was, I had two before. But <laughs> electricity went out. Anyway. You take two cups, and before you go to bed, you, you have two sticky notes. So one sticky note is your current situation, your current reality in your life, and then the, uh, that you want to see changed. And the other, put your new reality and stick those sticky notes on, on, the, on the glasses, right? They're both empty. Then you pour water into your current reality, just enough to drink, right? And th these sticky notes can say things like my business, my business currently makes so much money a month. And then in the other one, it's like what you really want it to make. Right. Or it could be something like I am afraid on the my current life and I am fearless on the one I want to be. Right. So you're going to pour some water in the first glass in your current reality and you're going to say out loud, this is my current reality. Then you're going to pour that water into the second glass and say, this is my new reality. And you're going to drink from the second glass. If you do this every day, two things will happen. One, you will start to believe in the possibility of you achieving your goals. And two, water has memory. And more than 60% of your body is made up of water. So you energetically start to become a vibrational match to your desires. 
Yeah. It's just such a great exercise. Wow. So as your meditation practice grows, imagine the life you want to live and sit in the feeling of it. You know that we've learned from Helen and all the wonderful meditation and intention teachings that feelings play a huge part in manifesting the outcome. It really is an important aspect because our mind hijacks the possibility until our feelings get involved. And when our feelings get involved, then it's almost like when you make a decision, it's just going to happen because you can feel it. You can see it, see yourself doing that thing and feel it. That's how Joe Dispenza walks because he was crippled. So that just blows my mind. And finally, and then I will open up for questions. I want to talk about how to make any encounter life changing. I learned this from Catherine Wang from Awaken the Bride as we were growing in our living loves class. So it doesn't matter if your encounter is high definition or if you can barely perceive what's going on. Enjoy it however it comes. So if you're engaging in the spirit, decide that you're gonna enjoy it. Then take it through these three steps to make it life-changing. One is enjoy it, experience it, enjoy it. Two, retell it. Write it in a journal or record yourself encountering the experience. Retelling it does several things. First, it makes you think about the encounter from a different angle. By having to think of words to describe a feeling you had or a color you saw, you analyze it from a different perspective. So you glean from the encounter and it takes the encounter deeper inside of you. Second, often the, of, often the encounter will reopen for me as I'm, re, as I'm recording it. God will continue a conversation we were having, or I'll have a detail I overlooked that I wasn't able to see before. I'll gain from the more truth from the encounter as I'm writing it. Third, by retelling the story, you live it again. Research shows that the brain can't tell the difference between experiencing something and remembering this experience in your brain. Re rewriting your heavenly encounter is like having an encounter all over again. It's like having a second or third or 15th encounter. Retelling multiples affect the same encounter. I'm sorry, my printer was running out of ink and I changed it and then it wasn't correct. So I'm reading in the dark and my printer wasn't good to me. So, <laughs> and then finally relive it. Listen to the encounter and you record it again and again or reread it again and again. Focus on how you felt. When I'm trying to break into a new truth, I will reread the encounter countless times until the feeling I had in the encounter is the feeling that I'm living from on earth. For example, if I had an, a heavenly encounter where I felt incredibly loved by God, I will reread my encounter, focusing on the feeling the vision created inside of me. I can still to this day think back to when I was 26 years old and I was ready to give up on my life and I went to that church and encountered love like I'd never experienced in my life. I can feel it as if it is still that day because periodically I remind myself of that event. And then feeling shapes thoughts. You all understand that. So as we focus on the feelings, the heavenly encounter produces inside of me. It felt I felt sweetly loved by God. I write down my encounter and I read it over and over. Reliving it until the feeling it sparked inside me is how I feel on earth. So I just want to encourage you all to not just look for people who have the answer, or but challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to step out in your I amness. And I know most of you do. So I'm, I know I'm talking to the choir here. I just, if there's, hopefully some of these things will encourage you or will challenge you, and you will you will get more out of your walking this out because we are going to change the world. We're going to restore creation to its fullness. I really believe that with everything in me. And the more we can get on board with that, the more we're gonna raise vibrations and change the world. So that's my, my gig. <laughs> oh my golly, oh my golly. I, well, sorry, there's a mosquito here. Um, Marge. <laughs> I'm trying to get us back into a gallery for a, bring us all into the room. Mar Margie, that honestly was so amazing. I'm looking at all the hearts on the screen. I don't know if you can see them. Um, I, you know, if, 
if we were going to be challenged and set up for the summer, what to think about? I don't know about you, but I'll tell you what, you have just lit fires here and, and um, straightened some curvy paths and, and given courage. I feel, I feel that there's courage from this message that to, to go forward into sorry there really is a mosquito um to go forward into uh, the unknown like whether you whether you understand it or not whether you know it uh, or not that you know intuitive instinctive thing in you that gave you courage to move in the direction you are in uh, is contagious so i i just want to say thank you for for this fabulous fabulous message oh thanks outstanding outstanding wow. <laughs> you got you got mosquitoes attacking you over there i Helen? have i have two mosquitoes <laughs> <laughs> and i'm i'm also reacting very badly to them um so that a mosquito bite that might be a little bump and itchy for a day turns into a blister that stays for a month um, so i'm I'm at war. Sorry, sorry. Talk to them. Talk to them. Oh, I mm. <laughs> get off. Get out. <laughs> anyway, Margie, thank you. I and and I don't know. Have you? Has anyone any questions or comments for Margie? <laughs> okay. I wanted to thank you for the um, how you were sharing just about your journey at the beginning and just about the the truths that you had been taught or the those 20 things it was just very helpful to hear you list them because as you're saying I'm like yeah uh-huh check 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 and and I just I really appreciated you sort of bringing sort of like a summary of all those things that we've grown up in and and at that time and the simplicity of our faith like we thought that was it but then being able to move forward in into more complex faith and you know and um yeah uh even into some per perplexity about our faith I, I really appreciate how you verbalize that so thank you for sharing your story it was so powerful and um encouraging thank you yeah thank you I, I appreciated that list too Margie because uh I didn't feel that you were uh pointing the the finger in condemnation this was your experience. This is where you landed. And uh, it was very impacting. I agree with Kathy. Yeah. Thank you. Gina. Good. Um, thank you for sharing uh, your, your personal silence time with us and, and your journey. It was beautiful. Um, I too was really impacted by the list that you um, brought forth at the beginning. In fact, I was weeping because of the reality of all of that and how sad it is that we have <clears throat> bought it hook, hook, line, and sinker. Um, and that's how, how it was, I guess, um, for me too. So it brought back the sadness um, of having to go through that. So, and having to um, be faced with those things and having to come to terms with them, that's a hard um, thing to to look at. And it's a hard thing to face. So, thank you for that. I'm I'm so uh, blessed that you wrote it out in such a beautifully succinct way, because it, it spoke to our hearts and it spoke to our lives and it spoke to our experiences, because we've all been there or are there. And um, I don't know, it just struck me as, as a very sad thing. And it's too bad 
that we have had to have gone there when we are so much more, right? So much more than, than all of that and what's been kind of rammed down our throat. So I, I'm, I'm, I was rejoicing and happy. I wouldn't stay in any sadness. It just, it just struck me and I was weeping. Mm -hmm. But um, I was rejoicing that we are in this beautiful time of, of awakening and awareness and a different time than I think we've ever, ever, ever been in, uh, in our lives anyway, for sure. But in, in, the, in the world itself in you know so and i like that you brought up the speaking with people and meeting different beings and because therein lies so so much of our um journey forward is in the ancient right not all, not all of it but um so yeah, I, I really appreciated it. It really spoke to me and really uh, reminded me of a lot of uh, beautiful processes and journeys and things we can really, really be grateful for. So thank you. I'm I'm excited for you. Thank you. I feel like too, like now, I mean, now in the place that I'm at now, I, I'm I'm not angry anymore, but, and I also see the beauty in the journey, you know, like I can look back and recognize all those things and recognize like, like even conflict can be a beautiful thing because it causes you to really know what you do know. And, and I don't know that without it, we wouldn't, you know, like, I wonder if that's why the tree of good and evil was even in the garden at all, because if everything was good, would we know what we have? So, in order to go through this whole journey, like, like even immortality, like I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for immortality and immortal beauty and everything else. Like mm -hmm. if all this is possible, like this is like a blink of an eye mm -hmm. compared to what's going to happen. I mean, we could all have a whole set of children, like a hundred, a couple times more, you know, like if it's all going to change, change, then this is really a beautiful journey we've been on. Now mm -hmm. I can say that. I don't know if going through it, I, I thought that. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Would you have come to the same place without the journey? Right. I doubt it. Well. And, and, and that's even another thing. Like when you see the people who, even like the Joe Dispenza people and something like, remember, like part of my struggle was what's the point of Jesus then? And things like that. Like those questions would come up in my mind. And um, there's something that he offers that is different. There's something sacred, something, you know, like where people, I mean, they're finding love and they're the oneness and everything's great. And they're learning how to be, I am without really knowing I am in the, some of them do some, I don't want to, I don't want to judge at all. Like, that's not the point. It's just that there is the constructs that we were taught, even if it, a lot of it was wrong, it's still I really truly believe the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. I really believe that. And I don't know why. I don't have the same reasons. Like I used to have the Bible. I'll tell you, this is why. You know, and you better believe it. <laughs> but now it's just because it is. Yeah. And that's okay. Totally. Totally. Um, I I personally love I love object lessons. I love things. I think it's the five-year-old in me that just says, Oh, thank you. That that really uh, really is simple, but like you said, um, practice is different than trying, and so that that is a key. That is an absolute key to practice these things, as silly as they may seem. Even your your um, uh, well, uh, even your your you know telling telling us take three minutes. A, a day make it simple do this stay quiet whatever that is that is key they're all all keys and um, where we'll go with it if we will practice is into that place that we want to be which is unlimited totally unlimited 
Wow. 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 Jen is having a good time tonight. <laughs> I'm loving the energy that she has. Uh, okay, Eddie. And then... Um, Eddie. Um, am I... You're yes. on? Yes. Okay. Uh, Margie, like, when you were talking about... That, when you talked to the whales and you said you wanted to see them and you wanted the command performance and... Uh, I sleep with a woman who tells me like I have to practice these things all the time. And one of the things was when when we were in um uh Puerto Vallarta, uh she she was she always goes for a walk and uh I'm on the beach. <laughs> Where else should I be? And uh and the whales came in and they never do uh like everybody has to go pay so much money and to go out on the in the ocean and they came into the into the area and they did a reasonably good performance and <laughs> and I was so excited because I got a show and um without paying for it that that didn't matter but so when Helen came back I said to her I said you know like you missed out on on uh, something that never happens and it was fantastic and she said to me hey if i was supposed to see it then they'll be back tomorrow and i'm going yeah like you know that doesn't happen because everybody on the beach was saying they'd never seen this before well as you know the next day they were back and i went i like helen not how how do you do it but so I learned that when I'm when I'm upset with, I wake up in the morning and a crow is is cawing away there, and I'm gonna go and get uh, the same thing that Todd would probably get a, a gun and shoot the crow, and uh, so that I could sleep. And she says, "Talk to the crow," and I'm going, "Well," she says, "Talk to the crow," and I'm going, "Okay," because. You're saying you got to practice, like you know, you got to, you can't just try it. You have to practice and and believe in it, and yeah. So you were a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. We lost you, Helen. Sorry, I thought there was feedback. Plank family. You had your hand up. It's not there, but and Todd yeah. wouldn't go get a gun. Don't be silly, Eddie. Don't be silly. <laughs> Never. <I know. laughs> but I it's okay to get a zap from the mosquitoes, right? <laughs> <sighs> I have learned in this house to catch flies and release them out the front door instead of smashing them. But that's wise. <laughs> yeah, but um. Margie, that was that was incredible. That was, you know, it's I'm I'm going through a <clears throat> listening to the reading the Bible in a year again. You know, just wanted to go through it, and it helps center me in the morning. Like that's my meditative time. It, that it's I need something to start doing that. But I got to tell you, I'm in the Old Testament, and it is slogging to go through Leviticus and those and and listen to this and just go. You know, even numbers, it's like, that's just not the God I know today. And it, so I, I very much see what you're talking about. And I remember that in there. And, and, I, and I, I also had read a book that that's where it came from, right? When the Age of Enlightenment came in and the churches, Catholic and Protestant, were losing so many believers. One put all the money on the Pope is infallible and the other put all their money and everything on the bible is infallible and so for 200 and some years we've been um eating off of that in the west and you know it it, it was very hard for me to get through those times just like you said gina and, but i don't think it makes me as sad anymore um because Gina, when you said you have to practice this, you don't try to do something, you practice it. I remember when I was learning martial arts, I started as an adult because I wanted, 
I thought my son would like it because I always regretted not learning. But they, I signed up when I signed him up when he was five. And, you know, there is physical science to punching a heavy bag actually builds muscle um, and strength faster than pushing weight. Uh, just the resistance. So some of the things that you have to do that are physically uncomfortable, especially at first, are the best way to get to where you're supposed to be. And so, you know, Elizabeth knows me well. I don't like, <clears throat> I don't like to suffer. I don't like to be sick. Break a bone, I can handle it. But for me to have a cold, that's miserable because that won't go away. I know the broken bone's going to go away. But I have to look at all the things that we've been through. And in fact, I sometimes in my work, sometimes a meeting with an employee becomes almost as much counseling, especially nowadays, um, as it is coaching or helping redirect a behavior. But I was in a, a conversation just last week with a, a very challenging employee because he's got a lot of real medical and other issues going on in his life. He can't even talk in a linear fashion. It's very just hard to keep on track, which anybody in counseling, God bless you to sign up for that as a full-time gig because it wears me out. But I did. I said to Elizabeth, I said, I need to go and talk to this person. I said, just intend for me. And I centered myself. Just quick heart brain coherence as I walked out to my office. And honestly, he turned the conversation around to saying, well, you know what? I've come to a place where um, these things that the company is doing to me are only making me more peaceful. And I've learned to let go of what I can't control. And it was amazing that he got there. And that was all just from the I am in me because there, there's no corporate training that gets somebody to do that, right? There's no safe corporate speak or training that I can go through. But this person had gotten themselves to a realization for them that worked and also worked for us at work. Uh, and it's, I, I'm, I'm being very cryptic. If I went into details, it wouldn't be fair to that person, but, um, it was amazing because previously when I talked to this person, I would come back so drained and exhausted. Um, I mean, just smoked. And there was that little moment of turnaround. And so I was very grateful. And Elizabeth said, how did it go? I said, better than I thought it would. It was actually not, it wasn't bad. There was actually a good outcome. Um, there's still a journey, but I came across something earlier this week and I shared it with Helen and Elizabeth, and maybe this is too elementary, but I think it really fits with what you're saying. There was, um, I believe it was a Chinese philosopher who studied all of the major religions, you know, um, Buddhism, Taoism, Hinduism, even Islam. And then someone told him about the gospel and gave him a Bible. And he read the entire New Testament and they asked him, what was the most amazing thing to you? And everybody expected, you know, that Jesus would come sacrifice himself or that, uh, you know, our sins can be forgiven and intentional pause here. Do you know what his answer was? That we belong. That your God would come to dwell in you. Mm. out of all the religions that he'd made a lifetime of study mm. that's great and when i say religions i mean this was a deeply spiritual knew the lord i believe that but that you all teach that he comes to dwell in you mm. was just an amazing revelation for him and i just thought it was so cool i had to share it because when i listened to the i am and and Source and resource blew my mind, by the way. Um, I walked away going, why am I working so hard? <laughs> In so many hours. Um, but that actually do helped me. You're going to do the cup. Yeah, I am. I'm going to do the cup. <laughs> um, 
but I, I will just tell you, there were so many golden nuggets in there. Um, practical for someone who needs a tactical to get them to the spiritual sometimes. There was so much in there. I just want to thank you for it and applaud you. Uh, um, yeah. It was it was really cool. And Jen was loving it, by the way. The whole time. <laughs> she was smiling the whole time. Yeah. She was. Yeah. Uh, Todd, thank you. I, I so agree with you. And I thank you for, for sharing that um that testimony. When you think of it, uh, the most amazing thing that is that truly that he would take up residence in us and we would be one. We're you know, we've just started, well, I can only speak for myself. I've just started to truly live in the reality of that. I've known that intellectually. Uh, now you can't take it out of me, you know, now you couldn't argue, you couldn't, uh, one of the, one of the books that I read a long time ago was, um, I forget, I forget it was volume one. It was really thick. Uh, the evidence demands a verdict. This lawyer that was looking into the crucifixion and, and, uh, it was an atheist and became, uh, gave his, mm -hmm. his life to, to, uh, be following Christ, because as a lawyer he 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 saw Christ in us that was it Margie you you are you are such a gift tonight just such a such a, a gift when I I look at my I, I took notes and I thought what am I doing this has been recorded um <laughs> how silly of me but I I realized the 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 simplicity of where you where you came from, where you shared tonight was outstanding, absolutely outstanding. I'm going to stop talking because Judy has her hand up. <laughs> That's a good reason. There you I go. just I I just thank you so much, uh, Margie. I I could um, relate to so much of your journey, and uh, for myself personally when I've come through all of this stuff, it just fills me with gratitude. Yeah. And I know I wouldn't be such a grateful person if I hadn't gone through these things. And I've gone through, you know, exactly what you're talking about in many areas of my life. So I, I just think it's a, it, it's a real learning curve. And so I am just so grateful and I thank you so much for taking the time and I am so thankful that you're writing a book yeah. because that really needs to be out Let's there I don't just try and I make a decision <laughs> yeah there you go and I just want to say to Ed we have a friend here <laughs> in Brandon mm -hmm. and um to do with the crows she would <laughs> stick her finger up to those crows and say, you are dead. And those crows would die. So, and I'm sure she still does that today. So, you know, what, what you're saying is, you know, it's absolutely the truth. Just practice it. That's funny. Oh, Lord, and we have derailed here one more time. Mm -hmm. Look, I just want to go on record as saying that when I grow up, I want to be like Elizabeth. I I want that sensitive. I'm serious. I want that sensitivity. Uh, I, Elizabeth, I think of you often, especially being out uh, at at the cottage. So because every we're we're just enveloped by nature, and uh, uh, I remember remember Todd saying that uh, one of his i think it was your your brother that said when if there's reincarnation i want to come back as as one of elizabeth's pets which is her dogs <laughs> yeah. i thought i i i want i want to be that sensitive i really i and so i i put on my elizabeth mantle a lot cuz i need that sensitivity to put the fly out instead of mushing it <laughs> We have digressed. Uh, Jacques, Monsieur. Oui, hello. Hello. Comment ça va? Uh, yeah, ça va, ça va. Uh, thank you. And hello to everybody else. 
uh, I, I wanted to say, like everybody's saying here, uh, it touches uh, many areas uh, of our lives. Uh, and uh, the synchronization of it is just uh, so much like mine. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Um, but uh, it, it's quite a journey. But I have a question. Uh, when you started mentioning that uh, you were afraid to lose your practice or ministry, uh, and, and because all of the, the uh, true realization of uh, the Christ within was just opening up to you, uh, and you were, I think uh, you were saying like, Oh, what am I going to do here? You know, like everything that I've been teaching is just, you know, overboard now. Bye, bye. Oh, this, bye, goodbye, goodbye, you know. And so how did you merge with what you were experiencing now with uh, your, your counseling ministry and, you know, incorporated and release it into people's lives? Well, it, it was interesting, the journey that God took me on, because I started with Sozo, you know, in my practice, I started using, um, are you familiar with Sozo from Bethel? Um, it's just a, a, a form where you take people into the spirit. And I had been using that for a while anyway. So I kind of, my my whole way of counseling is to take people in to God and let him do the counseling, right? Because my my goal is to not keep people coming to me, but to teach them that they have what they need inside of them. And so it just kind of was a good said way. Like it, it wasn't that, I mean, it was a little bit because I would run up against very religious people and that could cause some problems because I really, I put a high price on authenticity and especially my own. And um, it, there were some challenging times. Like I remember a couple of times where I felt like I, I wasn't faithful to myself. Like maybe I just made somebody happy, mm -hmm. you know, and I, instead of, but I, I think I've moved past that. Like at this point, God sends me really great people who are ready. They're on the journey and they're just looking for validation and they just need to know that they are in the I am. And, you know, so it, it's a challenge. It's a very challenging thing because I try not to judge. I try not to um, put my belief system on anybody. So it, it is definitely a fine dance I'm dancing. Um, I was thinking I would call myself a mystic instead or maybe a spiritual, I don't know. I was gonna change my sign outside my office, but then I thought, no, because because there are plenty of people in the church that are that are on this journey like we are and they need to be able to go somewhere. I'm sure that there's fallout, like I can tell, like there's people who come and then go away and never call me back, you know, and never say anything like that's that never happened. Like I didn't have people who just disappeared. <laughs> so I think I might have said some things that they didn't agree with, you know, and and I'm really OK with that because I'm not. I'm not willing, I'm not really not afraid of what will happen anymore. Like I believe that I am meant to do what I'm doing and God will send it. It's like what Helen always says, and I know that's not her quote, but when the student is ready, the teacher is provided. And God just sends me people who are ready to hear at least that they're powerful. Whereas I've always kind of taken that route, but now it's so much more because of the I amness. So it it was a difficult season for a bit, but I think I'm coming into a much freer, much more able way. Like I don't have to give up my practice. I may end up getting sued or something because I don't know about my covering because my church just recently asked me to leave, but, um, and they were my covering. So I, I, <laughs> not sure what to do about all that but you know what god will show me i'm not really worried about it which is not usually my mo <laughs> so this is the new me <laughs> new and improved marchy <laughs> wow so i hope that answered your question jacques are you there did that help yes he said yes yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah i didn't I, I was doing the texting a little bit there just oh. not to 
Oh, I see. Interrupt it. your her flow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was phenomenal. I was phenomenal. I love this. Just mm -hmm. the way it flowed right back in there. Well, right. Anyways, you know what I mean. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks, Jock. <clears throat> Plank family. Yeah, you know, Margie, I'm I'm sorry that your church asked you to leave, but I, it <laughs> you reminded me of when we, I begrudgingly first started. You know, I, I heard about this ascension stuff, and I'm like, that doesn't fit. I mean, in my head, I'm like, uh, aren't you supposed to be afraid of that? You know, what about this tethering and you know all this stuff and, um, um. I forget what they call that, but um, we were soul, asked to. Soul ties. Oh, go ahead. Soul ties. Like yeah, soul ties and like that. Yeah, okay, got or it. I got soul astral projecting, right? They're like, you, oh, you're okay. getting into this new age, and you can. That's really dangerous. Um, but it was right about the time that our church asked us to step up and and become pastors at the church. And so they were inviting us to leadership. Um, and I asked, I said, why? And and the, the head pastor said, well, I don't want you to do anything that you're not doing already because you minister to people all the time as a couple um, in different ways. And I don't want to dishonor at all. Um, but there was also, I kind of learned and got a little bit of revelation that some of the conversations turned to you know, in a position of leadership at the church, some of the things that you're welcome to do in your home groups and you're welcome welcome to do on your own, now that you're part of the leadership of this church, maybe that's, you know, that reflects on the church. And I I had to really print what they were actually saying is some of the things you're talking about are, are out there and you're scaring us. So now in leadership, can you tone it down? It wasn't that clear at all. But I actually really had to search my heart because I have a very strong loyalty streak. And I love this man today. We're still the church. He's no longer the pastor over that church and we're at a different church, but he's retired, but we're still dear friends. But I really had to search and I had to get to a place where one, it didn't offend me and it didn't make me feel like they were clipping my wings. And so I don't, I don't want to even over-spiritualize it. I was contemplating it. I was mulling it over. But what I was really doing was asking Papa, you know, what's, what's really going on here? And I got this very clear answer. He is a shepherd and he's looking out for the flock. And even in the way he said it to you, his belief was that somebody who wasn't pretty mature in the Lord and in a relationship with the Lord might take what you're doing and run off, go, go the wrong way. So it was really for what the Lord showed me was in his heart. He thought he was protecting mm -hmm. the, the baby Christians, the new, um, not foundationally solid in the Lord. Um, and, and I had to hear that because I was like, that was the second church that went, you guys are talking about some pretty strange stuff. Um, and they actually, it sounded like fear. It sounded like control. But when I really just went, I, I don't get it. You talk about um, cognitive dissonance. I was like, okay, I, I don't know how to balance these. I don't know where to go. Is, is, is it right that we should shut this down or is it that we should keep doing this and shut up about it or, but what the answer really was, was for him, it was years and years of what the church has done to so many is we've given up the true experiences of God for fear that it might be the devil. Yeah. And fear is a huge factor. And and yeah. and let me just explain to you that like my church didn't just come and say, okay, you can't come here anymore. But I had stopped going, but I was still a part of the transformation center. And um, I was doing sozos and things like that. And, and then they restructured leadership, you know, where they wanted to secure their boundaries and their borders. And I was outside of that because I hadn't been attending. The, the guy who was running the transformation center said he 
if I stopped going, he would fight for me because they'd had other people who, you know, in other circumstances, deliverance ministers and things. But when they called me, I really was like, listen, take it off your heart. There's no animosity here. I understand completely. I'm not in alignment with you. And you need to have people who are in alignment with you. So I get it completely. So there's no ill will. We'll still get together. You know, like it's still all good. Like it left on a very good note. It's just my covering. But Gina had said, I, I don't need a covering. <laughs> so, so that, you know, like, so I didn't want this to, you know, in case anybody ever saw this, it wasn't like they asked me to leave and it was a bad thing. It was, it was a beautiful thing. Like you said, just like that, like I completely understood I don't want to be, I don't want to be a disrupting voice. And if, when people are ready, they're ready. It's on their, it's on their terms, not anybody else. Like I, I never pushed what I was believing, but I couldn't sit under the old way anymore. And I think that's where most of us are at, right? Margie, who was Jesus's covering? That's right. Who was right. Paul's even? Jesus. There you go, right? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Susan. Uh, Margie, thank Margie. you. Margie, mm -hmm. thank <laughs> you. Uh, I I uh, loved listening to your journey and recognize myself in it many times, going through a lot of the same things in the past. But I loved also um, your uh, awakening with father through his love to the point that you know it brought you to your higher self when you were talking about that i could feel his tenderness for you a very tender heart towards you and when you speak of the intimacy um i i can feel that it has the power in it to melt hearts to melt a hardness of heart. Um, I like also the way in your talk, uh, you ended it, you summed it up that on your journey, uh, you came to this point of all of us. We're all in this together. We're all one. And we're here to change the world, to make a difference. And I just want to say that I love that. I'm totally with you, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I love you. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, Susan, I think you spoke for a lot of us. Thank you. That's beautifully said, and we sure agree. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, Margie. You've, imp you've impacted a lot of people. And that's so great. So great. Does it's so else? nice to have you with us. <laughs> I know. I wish it was more. I know. I Like even like this last time with the what ifs, I couldn't really be there because of, because the first time I kind of gave up work, you know, like I, I usually work those hours Saturday morning and Tuesday nights, but I would just end by eight and I usually go till nine on my, on the East coast. And um, the second time I couldn't afford to, cause I really was paying for it. You know, it was like, it was coming out of my, my, uh, my counseling was showing that it was not doing as well. So I couldn't do it then, but so I went when I could and Wednesday night, I work Tuesdays and Thursday nights. So Wednesday night's like my date night, you know, so it's kind of a hard thing. Like I'd love to be here, but it's, it's hard. So I just am glad that you guys are here. You know what I mean? Like, I am so grateful. Oh my gosh. Like I don't have words. For the for the the heart for this group, all of you, I absolutely love you. And like I saw Hadassah was on here today. She was in my God group. I did have a God squad for quite some time. We met for a while, but then it was it was just not fitting into my schedule anymore. But I, I really I feel like kindred. You you you're my people. You know, I just wish I could be here more. <laughs> well. I I like I said at the beginning I appreciate you keeping in in touch and uh, um, I always feel like you're here I always feel and I I so often think I I need to talk to Margie about this you know <laughs> so this, yeah, to I, watch them. I do watch them they still you know I still I feel like I'm watching it with you like I'm here but I'm not I miss it yeah 
that's the that's the the beauty of what what Zoom brings us into. It's also uh, makes you feel hungry for wanting more, <laughs> like more light, Margie. Is your light going out again? Oh, my last flashlight, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I will wash my face in the dark. <laughs> you are the light, girl. You are the light. I know. I wish I could light up this room, but I, I haven't well, figured that have. out. I got to make a phone. <laughs> you, have, you have completely lit up this room, and uh, we're really grateful, very grateful for you for, for coming on tonight. Uh, and Jen, I haven't seen you so so excited so happy so upright so focused <laughs> so the energy she's our, our barometer of how things are going and uh, tonight tonight is exceptional that's so good. full seal of approval yeah um, totally <laughs> totally that's great i love that <laughs> all right uh sharina I didn't want to say anything, but I thought I have to. Then, <laughs> you know, it's so, so encouraging, Margie. And I can see, you know, you have the joy in you is overwhelming. That's mm -hmm. what I see. Yeah, so much joy in you. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, I, you have come before sometimes, you know, in the, in, in the Zoom, but that time was different. And now I see you like full of joy. And um, and then some of us, yes, you said we are also in that journey, uh, removing all those, uh, you know, the wrong teachings and beliefs and all. But then you have stepped in there, and that's what encouraging me, you know, because you know even some me like, yeah, I know these things, but I haven't really stepped in uh, in those areas. And and I see these testimonies. It's like a so encouraging you know it's like yeah you can do that then you you, you know we can do that too we see like the if things we do, anybody can yeah. yeah so like that is you know we we because helen and all they've been teaching us and we are we are changing and changing from inside out but sometimes not really stepping into we, we may have a little here and there for me but you know i need more more you know so because uh, knowing is one thing and um, living in that thing is different. So like what you said, um, I really pointed out practice is different from trying. Uh, that is really spoke out to me, um, really. And then, um, yeah, so it is so encouraging. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing it. Yeah, thank you. Good. Absolutely. Thank you. thank you, Serena. That's lovely. Kathy, I just wanted to read uh, Susan MS's uh, message because I don't think Margie can see the chat. Um, I can't she says, answer same people either because I because I'm on my phone and I yeah. can't use the phone, answer the chat, and type and hold the the flashlight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Susan is, says, "Love this journey. So mirrors mine. Thank you for hope and courage." Yeah. Um, and uh, Jacques also just wrote again, uh, your testimony shows that it's okay. No matter what we had thought we had or knew, all is good. All is okay. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's so, that's so good. Thank, thanks, Kathy. Appreciate you. <clears throat> Jerry. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Margie. I think one of the really interesting things that I think was a thread that ran through all of this is starting out in um, being trained to be afraid of failing God, being trained to be afraid of God, being trained and indoctrinated with the consequences of stepping outside of the doctrine. And I think you spoke so very profoundly about stepping out of not only the fear of, of what you had been taught, but stepping out of the fear of not believing yourself. And I think there's so much to be said about how strongly that fear of man, the fear of God, the fear of failing in the doctrine, 
And then for foremost, the fear of ourselves and the lack of confidence in ourselves. And I think you both spoke very, very clearly and very, very beautifully about the multiple levels of what it takes to move in and out of these teachings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 150%. Jerry, well, well said. Thank you for sharing that. And and it it really is terrifying. Yeah. It, like when you think about it, the way we were taught, it it, it takes a great amount of courage. It does. Like it, it really does. Like all of us who are on this Zoom have taken steps to freedom. It's like we were slaves and we we got on the train, you know, like we 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 or we came over on a boat and left our lives with nothing on our back but the clothes we had on, you know, like we all I mean, I hate to compare it to something as tragic as that, but the truth is it takes that much courage okay. to step out of what you built your life on. So I just applaud all of us for yeah. just finding an okayness in the difficulty because yeah. it is, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. Well, and it's also incredibly important that you get the confidence to be able to ask the questions because there is no wrong question. Amen. And so and we've from from infancy have been trained that the consequences of failure is punishment. So it's not just where we've come in the doctrination in the church. Mm -hmm. It's coming out of that in the family. It's coming out of in it in so many aspects of our life that we don't even I, I'm not sure we even truly recognize how programmed we are. Mm -hmm. But but that's why even like like to, when I work with people who have a victim mentality, that's hard to give up too, because your identity is bound up in that idea that I am a victim. Like, you know, then people might take care of me or I might get disability or like, there's just all these things to, to actually walk in I am and a responsible adulting, right? Like I remember when God said, don't call me father. I was like, I don't want to be up there with you. Like, I need a daddy. I want to hold your hand and I want to continue to, you tell me what to do. And he was like, well, that's okay. You can stay here. Like, it was never like he was like kicking me out of the boat. He was just like, but you could come up here and we could do this together. And that was more exciting than staying in my childishness. And I'm not there. I'm not, I'm not, don't mean to sound like I am. I'm on the journey of arriving into a whole nother level of walking this out. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't do it if I had allowed fear to yeah. be my mantra. Yeah. So I, it's, so a, it's amazing how we pick, we pick and choose the, the scriptures that we choose to stand to, to set our life on because he says he will never leave, leave us nor forsake us. Trust in the Lord with it, all your heart. Yeah, but it's so much easier to believe that the indoctrination of fear. Right. Right. Well, there's lots of, there's lots attached to it. There's family, there's approval, there's acknowledgement, there's, you know, accolades, there's so many things. Yeah. So you have to really be willing to stand alone. And that is scary. Alone in the earth, but never alone, right? Because he's in us. So yeah. I'm excited. When you were talking about uh, that and how, you know, you you were having your conversations with God, I, I kept thinking every single time, you're having conversations with your higher self. Mm. Yeah, that's it's true. You. You're coming up with those answers. Yeah. You spoke the answer. Mm -hmm. It welled up from within you. Right. Because you are the I am. The I am. I you know. You are the is, way. Which is a very heretical thought, Gina. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Uh, but, you know, welcome to my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. But, yes, I, I, I know. And, um, but, funny. but is that. Is that true? No, we know it's not true. It's not heretical. No, 
I'm kidding. That's the yeah. truth. Um, so so I, I just was sitting there, yes, Margie, oh yeah. That's uh, you saying the answer to that question. That's you coming up with that, with that uh, revelation about your own identity and who you are. So um, bravo. Amen, thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, guys, it's uh, it's been an amazing, amazing night. I I uh, I loved just being able to be so so encouraged. It's uh, it's actually I I don't listen to a, a lot of what's uh, what people are saying these days because I I'm trying to lock in my uh, with with the Lord on so much. Uh, but Margie, you tonight have just made me feel like I can walk taller, with more uh -huh. straighter, with more courage. And some of the things that uh, I think I think that I want want that are on my scroll that I want to want to do, I can do them. I just feel that from tonight and. Uh, I just love you for it. I think, and I just want to say thank you. Absolutely, thank you. It was really my pleasure. It really was because it forced me to kind of put it down on paper. You know, like when you asked me, I'm like, "What? No, I'm going on vacation. Like, I'm fine for this." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, you know, I had mentioned I'm going to write a book. You know, so here I am. You know, there putting you. myself on the line. Yeah. But um, she she made me do it. And you know what? Even is even different in that because I've spoken a, a number of times and I. I always have so much swirling in my head that it's very hard to get it to get any kind of an outline or anything like that. That really is my where I struggle. Mm -hmm. And this time it really just flowed. Like I really am different. <laughs> like <laughs> so you too can be different. Yeah. 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 No, and we and we feel it, we sense it. And uh I'm so grateful that we're one because that takes a load off having to do it myself. <laughs> so good. <laughs> That that's the beautiful thing about us. having experiential stuff right that's right there's that's no right. there's no struggle then when you're trying to relay it because it's it's experiential right mm -hmm. exactly. So exactly all Thanks. right your journey yeah <laughs> thank you thank you so, so much I, I'm, because i was driving together i just want to make sure i understand what you got what you're doing so you're this is like your last one for like it would be your last one for the summer, but you're going to do it yeah. every other week, like not next week, but the week after. And you're just going to try to be here when you can. Yeah. Well, no, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm pretty sure the, that one Wednesday, the middle of the month, end of the month um, will work. I'm going to send out a calendar, like just, just the July uh, and August, pretty sure it's every second week. Um, I just don't feel that I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm being selfish, but I don't feel that I want to go through the summer without um, touching base. And um, there's, there's just too much happening in our hearts. And I, and I just want to hear from you, like what, because hey, Todd's on a roll on blessings. Like, can you imagine two weeks from now where, where he's going to be? We'll probably be invited to the yacht that's coming up in the harbor with his name on it. You know, like crazy stuff. Um, anyway, I just, uh, I'm just loving you so much and loving the journey and uh, just want to thank you. And if that works, come on, don't feel... Uh, and we we will post the meetings if uh, if they belong on lessons we'll we'll put it on lesson but you know that we have our private page with the um, round tables and uh, so that people won't miss if they want to check uh, check it out I don't think a lot of people actually are are going on the round table from what from what Bob says um, but it's there if anyone wants to, and it is, it is private, but uh, yeah, um, that's what we'll do. That's what we'll, mm -hmm. we'll do from this end. And if you can come on, that would be even, that would be great. 
Yeah, Kathy just put on the password, a uh, hashtag my tribe, if you want to uh, check in on any of the, the round tables. Yeah. Anyway, it's exciting. You guys are, are just such, such a blessing. And um, Margie, again, let's take a vote now because we really would like a follow-up uh, with Margie <laughs> at some point. I want to see. So let's take a vote. How many people would agree? Yeah. We, oh, okay, Margie, it seems that we have a quorum and um, you've, okay. just been, you've just been voted back. So take good okay. notes. All right. I'll All be right. working next thing that I'll have to share. Okay. Uh, Sally, or did you want to say something before we leave? No, I was just raising my hand, but that was so good tonight. Thank you so much, Margie. Really, oh. really enjoyed it. And I'm going to make my water tonight. Oh, yeah. you too, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you're two glasses of water each yes. night with a different... Yeah, you have your, your current reality and the reality that you want. And you pour the water from the current reality into the one you want, and then you drink that one. Okay. And I recommend saying things out loud because I think what comes out of your mouth is in your heart, right? So the right. more that you speak it, the more it gets into your heart too. So you can, okay. I, that's I'm what excited. I'm New yeah, project. <laughs> this is so fun. We'll all have a testimony in two weeks from just from drinking water. Love yeah. you. All right. Well, all right. love you. Good night and may the Lord bless you and keep you may make his face to shine on you be gracious unto you may he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom perfect peace nothing missing nothing broken love y'all love, love you good night everybody good night see you in two weeks if you can come on <laughs> <laughs>